Okay, in this video, I'm going to show how to hook up Angel Script to some basic AI routines in the engine. And what I'll show is a moving train. First, I'll show some of the models so you get an idea of how to set it up in Maya. So here's a simple train model. Again, very simple collision detection, which I'll move so you can see the mesh. So let's move that away. And here you see the train model. It's just several train carts put together and it's all in one mesh. First the actual trains and then the shadows right there. So that way it's easier for me to move the trains. I just have to move the whole object and not each individual train. And it also count um, reduces the draw call count because it's just two objects. Otherwise I'd have to draw or send a draw command for each of the trains and we want to minimize that. And again, I'll show the collision here. See, something really simple. So I'll sh maybe show some more. Yeah, here's a... Three trains. But again, it's the same concept. Very simple collision detection. And just some simple trains. Oh, I'll do a final one. So I have uh, several variations where I just swap out the types of trains that are hooked up. That way we, we have a little bit of variation in the types of moving trains that we're gonna have, but it's just the same concept. And now I show something simple in the editor. So when the player passes this trigger right here, let me select it. Oh, I didn't, I unselected it, there we go it's going to call a script function called spawn train. So that'll happen when he goes through the uh, this trigger. And I've also put a spawn point right here. Spawn point zero, as you can see. And that's where I'm going to spawn the actual train. So it's far enough away that you will not see the train being spawned and then it'll just come up, come up the tracks and you'll have to block it or avoid it. So I'll show that in the next video. And also I'll show some of the code of how I hook that up to get the train to spawn. So that I'll show in the next section of this video. Okay, here I'm gonna show the train that's popping up as you can see. So there you go, splat. So that's uh, the script in angel script that I coded to do this and I'll show the train from different angles and that'll be in the next section of the video. Here we can see the train from uh, another angle and just passes you. And I'll show it from the other side also in the next part of the video. Okay, here we're at the other side. And you can also see the curve shader as it curves the train when it's coming down the track. So next what I'll show is the actual code or a little bit of it that I used to set it up and how easy it is to integrate uh, this sort of behavior with AngelScript. All right, in this part of the video, I'm going to show the scripts that get that train moving in the previous screen that I showed before. So the first thing I'll show is uh, the train resource or the train entity. And here you can see it's just a script that the engine parses and there's a base class C game entity, which I'll show later. And then just a bunch of uh, components because I use the entity component uh, system design pattern. Uh, all you have to do is script up some components and that'll change the behavior and properties of the entity. So in this entity, we have a renderable mesh, which is uh, the visual mesh that you see on this screen for the train. Uh, collision brush, which is the simple collision that I showed in the Maya scene file earlier. And then the train movement, which is responsible for um, moving the train down the track. So for example, this train movement component has a default speed of 50. And there's a train movement system which takes the data in this component and uses it to move the train. So all the logic is in the systems 
and the component just contains the data specific to each component and then the entity resource is just a collection of these components and to give another example here is the ninja girl which is the character you see on the screen and again her base class is c game entity and then the difference is i'm using different components for the renderable mesh here it's a skin renderable since she's animated uh, there's uh, entity attachments, so this is her eyes and visor. And then, for example, a property is the head joint, which is used uh, to attach uh, the specific attachment meshes to the main body. And again, here there's a, an entity attachment system that has all the logic to bind these attachment meshes to the main body. And again, there's a component resource for blinking so that controls her uh, eye blinking so I assume that just uh, changes the visibility property of these attachments at some interval and uh, again here's the animation resource so that just has all the uh, animations of the character for the character controller so there's idle animations run animations and the good uh, idea of having it like this is I can have a scripter or game designer come up with their own entities. All they have to do is script, script up the entity resource and change or select the components they want the entity to have, and then they can make their own entities and use them in the game. And that frees me up. I'm not involved, and they can change all the properties that they want to their heart's content without programmer involvement. So let me see. I'll show this. I'll show this too. I also have entity pools, and here I have a entity pool of uh, eight trains. So the train entities is what's being referred here. So this train entity. And the reason I have that is so that I don't allocate memory during the game. I just reuse the same uh, entity objects. So it's much quicker and I avoid memory fragmentation over the long term. So that's just a little thing that I have there. So when I decide to spawn a train, it'll first check to see if there's a pool of uh, trains and it'll use those uh, in preference of actually manually allocating a train resource. So next I'll show the C game entity class, which is very simple. Well, there it is, absolutely nothing there. And that's because in the base C entity class, it's just a collection of components. And the reason I wanted to do that is I just want to avoid really complicated class hierarchies like having a train class, having a player class, etc. An obstacle or, you know, I don't want to have a new class for each and every entity in the world. I just want to have a simple base class and let the logic be in the components. So that's why I uh, went in that direction. So now I'm going to look at the actual angel script uh, routines. So first we'll eat look at this one this one's just an include file and this is a keyword that my engine detects which is vs generate string id and what that's going to do is it just creates a 32-bit unique hash for this string so i don't really pass strings between angel script and my engine i'd rather pass just an integer it's just simpler and it's more compact and it just saves on memory and actually, I, tr I try to avoid strings in my engine as much as possible. I just uh, would rather have a 32-bit integer uh, and for the same reasons. So this is just uh, the different types of trains. For instance, this one right here is uh, locomotive, passenger, passenger, and it's using the red material. And there's three uh, trains in, in the mesh. So it's, it's what I, the models I showed earlier is what we're going to be referencing. So now I'll go to the main script here. And again, here I include the script that I showed earlier. And here you can see spawn train, which is the same function that I had in the trigger that I showed in the level editor. So when you ever when you hit that trigger, it's going to call the spawn train function right here. And then that will call the C++ function. And what that has is the unique name for the train, I decided to just call it train. I could call it whatever, Bob, if I wanted. Then the type of train, which here is the locomotive followed by two passenger trains using the red material. And that this variable was included 
in this spawn train.as file. And then the spawn point, which is right up here. And surprisingly enough, or not really, it's spawn point zero, which is the spawn point I showed in the level editor. Now, these two are X and Z offsets for the spawn point. I decided to include that if you wanted to do a little bit of shifting. And this is the default speed of the train that I want. So I want him moving 200 units per second as opposed to the default 50. So I guess next I'll look at the actual C++ for binding this uh, spawn train function. And that's one of the strengths of uh, AngelScript that I like. The bindings are really easy to do. And there's no third party library that, uh, that you need. So let's look at that next. So here it is. So it's very simple to register a function. It's just this simple line. So really easy to do. And that's one of the main selling points that I had with AngelScript. There's no weird macros that you gotta use or some third party library that uses um, boost. It's, it's just very simple. You give it the function definition, your function, and then away you go. And that's one of the things I really liked that it was very clean and it's very, um, the scripting, the other thing I liked is the scripting was very uh, C-like or C++-like. So if you know C and C++, you'll be able to get up and running with uh, AngelScript very quickly. So again, you can see that the parameters match what I described earlier. And now we'll just go to the function. I guess that'll be it. Yeah, right here. So this is the function that's called when the script is triggered and again same same parameters as i described earlier i guess one of the decisions that i made was i didn't want to expose classes to the uh, scripter and um so i just have the scripter call some simple uh, c functions and that way the scripter doesn't know what's going on behind the hood i it could be a class that he's referencing or it could be an entity component it or just a component system. I just wanted to hide that, all that from the scripter. And this is why I chose this method. On another game that I worked on, you had to know about the classes and I didn't hide the class hierarchies from the scripting. But again, it different games have different um, decisions made. For this game, I decided this was the best way to go. So I'll just go a bit through the code here. I've checked to see if the player entity is active and if it's not I just return I don't spawn trains since there's no uh, since there's no active player here I grab the spawn point that I I referenced earlier in the script and I get the position of that spawn point and then if necessary I offset it by the x and z coordinates based on the parameters you pass in and then I do uh, I actually spawn the spawn, the uh, train. And here um, is where this spawn entity function, it'll first check to see if you've registered a entity pool. And if so, it'll actually give you one of those objects. And that way I avoid just memory allocations um, during gameplay. I like to not do that if possible. And if I do, if I do make allocations during during the game, I make I make sure that they're temporary for that frame. And in that case, I just use a stack allocator. So at the end, I just rewind the stack and I avoid any fragmentation issues. And one thing I want to show, like this code below where I'm fishing out the components. The train entity, if I go back, I think it might be, let me see. No. Oh, I have it over here. Yeah. So if we go back to here or right here. So this train has a minecart five mesh and a minecart five brush for the collision. I want to replace these on the fly as I'm allocating uh, a train. If I didn't, if I didn't do this, what I would have to do is I'd have to create separate entity pools for each and every combination of trains that I could use. 
and the same with en these entity resources. I'd have to create one for each train combination. That's a whole mess, and I don't really don't want to deal with that. So what we do is I create eight of these, and then I swap out the mesh and the collision brush that's being referenced. So that's what you're seeing in the code right here. I'm checking is there a entity renderable, and if there is, I'm going through and swapping out the uh, the mesh with the one that you want based on your train type ID. And I'm doing the same thing for the collision. B based on the collision that you have for the train type, I swap it out. And the train movement component is the same thing. I just changed the uh, default velocity. Now this train movement component is used uh, by the train movement system and that's where all your logic is. So it'll take a train movement component, get the default speed, and then that logic is responsible for moving the train down the track. So that's pretty much uh, how I spawn the trains. I use C functions to hide whatever details are, uh, are necessary so that the scripter doesn't have to deal with classes or understand much in the way of uh, how I've uh, built up the entities so that you don't need to know about components or the the class hierarchy for the entities you just call these methods and it'll do all the heavy lifting for you and that's one of the other things that I do I prefer to keep my scripts really simple so any of the logic that I need done is usually I do it in C++ and then all you do is you just call the functionality from the scripts. I try to avoid doing really heavy logic in my scripts. I just prefer to do it in C++. So uh, in the next portion of this video, I'll show the a more complicated example with the multiple trains going down the track that you can avoid. But essentially, it's just the same. It's it's the same logic. It's just I'm I'm calling uh, more trains and with more variety. So that'll be what I show in the next section. All right, in this final part of the video, I show a couple more trains being spawned. So it's just the same script with multiple trains in different spawn points. I guess there's a little bit of dead space in between, but I was in a rush, so I just coded this up really quickly. But the integration works, and here's where, like I said, I'm using a pool of train resources that I just keep reusing. So there's a maximum of eight trains, and they don't get allocated. I just uh, go from the pool, and then you can see me swapping out the materials, the meshes, and the collision detection. Let's see, it's more dead space. Here's some more trains. So eventually when I do this uh, properly, I'm gonna add more variety with the types of trains and how quickly they they come at you. But for now, this is good enough. You can get an idea and you can see the uh, curve shader gives the trains a nice little look as they're coming down the track. So all in all, it works and I hope you found this useful. And again, this is just one way of integrating AngelScript with an engine you can for instance, use uh, track, or I mean, use uh, classes, expose classes, or f do functions. But I tr I sh just showed one of the many methods, and I guess it, it's useful to see it in practice in a working engine. So for now, that's all I have to show, and uh, I'll show something else next time. I don't know what I'm going to show, but uh, when I have it, I'll do another video. Thanks, and bye.